Praise God. Praise God. Welcome, everybody, to Lesson 4 of our course, BTB 127, Old Testament Books of History, Part 2. Tonight we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapters 10 through 36. That's 26 chapters, ladies and gentlemen. So Pastor Carter is getting ready to get on a roll. We're going to ask our friend uh, Justina to lead us in prayer. Would you do so, please, dear? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before your throne. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. Lord, thank you for the beautiful day that we have today. Thank you for gathering us together today to have fellowship and to learn and to read your word, Father. Lord, we pray that you give Pastor Carter the wisdom and knowledge that he needs as he gives your word tonight, Father. Help us, Lord, as students and as fellow Christians to be able to administer the things spoken tonight into our own lives and what we study and do. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, Father. Just give them peace and comfort during this time, Lord. Father, just be with us through our comings and our goings, and we give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Dustina. And we praise God for you and your family, and your love for the Lord, and what you're doing down in Tennessee. And now we're going to uh, go forward with our lesson tonight. After this uh, little note of ho housekeeping, little housekeeping notes, I sh share with Jackie today. I said, Jackie, starting next se semester, I'm going to tighten up a little bit on some of our students because I don't think everybody's reading their assignments. Oh, uh, uh, oops, ouch, ouch, ooh, ow, you hurt me, Pastor. But I said, I don't think everybody's reading these assignments as they should. And, uh, you know, it is so easy to get caught up, locked up in a, the easy route where you just take the questions and look in the Bible and answer the questions based on what you've discovered. But we want you to read this whole Bible. We want you to read. Man, there's so much. I mean, if every American read Second Chronicles, if every American read these 36 chapters in Second Chronicles, there would be a change in this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, many of us are praying for revival in America, and we're praying that people's eyes will open up, that they will see what's happening in this nation, and look at what happened to Israel, and use Israel as an example of what God's requirements are, and, and what happened to this nation that he loves, still loves so much. But if we would just read this, and, and, and the reason why we have this school is so that you all can grow in the Word and many of you are going to be teachers and, and, and instructors, and you're going to help share the word. So we don't want you to take the easy route. I'm saying this lovingly. We want everybody to read the, the, the assignments. Take that time out. It might take you a, a, a whole day uh, to read these assignments. And I know you have a busy schedule. But I said to Jackie today, Jackie said, Jackie, we're going to tighten up starting next semester, and I'm going to make sure that the assignments are, 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 are more acceptable. I don't want, I'm not going to accept a paragraph as an answer for a question. I'm going, to, I'm going to require more. I said, Jackie, we've got people who can write books on some of these questions. I said, I'm not requiring that. I said, well, a paragraph ain't going to get it. And so uh, you can look for me to tighten up next semester, ladies and gentlemen, because I want to make sure you're reading these assignments. It's all about getting the Word of God and getting this understanding of the heart of God, not just going through your, your assignment sheet, looking for the answers in the Bible, writing them down in a paragraph or two, and submitting that as homework. Uh, that day is going to end at the end of the semester. I'm, I'm looking for people who are going to read and absorb and then question and think about what these assignments are asking. But read these scriptures like tonight. We've got thirty we've got twenty six chapters to cover in Second Chronicles. And um and, and, and your two questions, a couple of questions, I mean, um people can easily find the answers to these questions, but I want you to read. 
read because the time's going to come. You'll be so so glad that you read your Bible. The day is coming, ladies and gentlemen, where we won't have these Bibles. Uh, I may not live to see it. Uh, many of you are younger than me, but the day is coming when we will not have Bibles. And what you learn now is maybe what's going to help people going in, in, in your posterity, your future generations. So we're not just looking out for ourselves right now. We're looking out for future generations that we teach the nation. One thing we draw from the study of Chronicles is Israel had it. Israel had the grace of God, the favor of God. They had the favor of God even among nations. But they grew lazy, they grew lax, and they, they became uh, uh, comfortable at ease in Zion, and they let their guards down. Uh, before long, they stopped worshiping God, and every now and then a good king would come and call their attention to God, but most of the people... They were, and they were led by backslidden uh, leaders and, and, and apostate leaders who chose to worship Baal and the, and the gods of the surrounding nations rather than be, to be true to God. And so we find in Chronicles, we find the rising of kings and the falling of kings. We find the rising of this great kingdom of Israel and how this kingdom fell, this kingdom fell in two stages. The northern kingdom fell in 721 B.C. Their southern neighbors, Judah, had 150 more years to live as a nation, but they did not uh, take heed to what happened to their brothers and sisters up north. And in 587 B.C., the southern kingdom ended. When we finish our lesson tonight in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, this is actually the end of the recorded history of the Jewish nation. Second Chronicles, when we finish, when, when uh, Zedekiah is made king and, and, and Jehoiakim, and, and they, his, his eyes are put out. He, and, and, and before his eyes are put out, he saw the, uh, the Nebuchadnezzar kill his sons. And this is the end of uh, Jewish Old Testament history. From that point on, yes, we have the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, and Ez Esther, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther fill in uh, what we've studied in First Sam, First Second Samuel, First Second Kings, First Second Chronicles, but then everything else in your Old Testament, uh, Psalms, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and then your uh, major prophets and minor prophets, all these books that follow, we have already covered the historical period. When we end our study tonight, we end, we, we complete, we actually complete the, the history of the Jewish nation in the Old Testament. Then when we look at Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, you, you, you get information that's going to fill in the blank spaces um, between um, um, Kings and Chronicles, and you see more detail about what was happening with the people during the time of these kings we're studying tonight. So I hope everybody gets the big picture. The big picture is God chose a nation, gave them great favor, gave them a land flowing with, flowing with milk and honey, meaning everything they needed was right there waiting on them. They didn't even have to build houses. The houses were waiting for them. All they had to do was drive out the enemy from their houses. Well, they drove out the enemy because the enemy was corrupt. The enemy, uh, they, they worshipped snakes and animals, and they, uh, they sacrificed their children to Hinnom and made their children pass through the fire. They sacrificed their children unto Baal and other so-called gods. And, and, and God did not want his people to be contaminated in this kind of atmosphere. But Israel was surrounded by this environment, and Satan was uh, uh, working very sharply. And uh, Karen can tell you this because she just finished a course on the giants are back and how Satan created a race of giants to try to destroy Israel. But God's hand was upon Israel, 
And as long as Israel obeyed God, ladies and gentlemen, as long as Israel did what God said do, they prospered. They did well. But when Israel backslid, when a king would turn his back against God, the people suffered. And there's a, a, a very close correlation or relationship uh, between the king or the leader of a nation and the welfare of the nation. I would, I wish that every leader in this nation, regardless of political party, I wish that they would read the Bible, read Chronicles, and see what God's requirements are. God's requirements supersede. That means go far beyond any platform that the Republican Party can produce or the Democratic Party can produce. God's platform is one of holiness and righteousness for an entire nation. I pray that leaders in this nation will study the Word of God and study the Bible and learn how to lead and how God prospers leaders who are righteous and holy and obedient. Sound like I'm preaching. I pray that every person in America, regardless of race, uh, color, uh, 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 ethnicity, would read the Bible to see what God's requirements are for a holy people. And when people read the Bible, when they get back to studying the Word of God, then we will see a great nation. Not only that, but many of you are listening in other nations. Your nation will prosper when people look at what God's requirements are. And, and the danger here, ladies and gentlemen, is people... Uh, rebel against that God, they don't want to hear this kind of preaching. They don't want to hear this. They don't want to stand up to, to God's standard and obey God. People want to do their own thing. And if Jesus were to come tonight and would teach this lesson that I'm teaching tonight, there would be people who would rebel against Jesus because people don't want to be uh, in front. They don't want their rights, their rights to be infringed on. But God's rights supersede human rights. God's rights are holy. God is a holy God. He requires holiness. He requires holiness in the king. In the king. He requires holiness in the people. And leaders ought to take heed. Leaders today and wannabe leaders need to take heed to what God's standards are. If you can't live up to God's standards, you need to get off Get out of the out of the race. Get get you know, you know find your find a a, a a a job in sports or entertainment or something. But because politics should not be your thing if you don't want to really lead God's people the way God uh, requires that we be led. And and it's not only on the leaders, but the people have a responsibility. That is why. Uh, the standards of this school, this Back to Basic School of Ministry, we require that you read the Bible. We require. I mean, how can how can uh, people uh, hear unless unless they hear hear a preacher or a teacher? And how can they teach unless they be taught? Well, your time is coming. Many of you will have will have an opportunity in your lifetime to share with people what's in the Bible, and it won't be. Uh, uh, a guessing game or what you heard brother so-and-so say or what brother do do dad said or what bishop so-and-so taught it's what the bible speaks to you and god wants to speak to every one of you please mute your phones god wants to speak to every one of you and show you what to do and show you what to do so um, that's, that's a long commentary, ladies and gentlemen, a long introduction to this lesson, and I pray that it will bless you. Do, do not be afraid of these courses. Do not be afraid. Set some quality time aside and read your Bible because the time is coming where uh, 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 you might be the only one in your community who knows the Word of God. The time is coming where uh, uh, Pastor So and So, who pastors a mega church, he might he you know he reads from his uh, 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 his essay every Sunday, and and or some of them have writers to write messages for them. But if you who know the Word of God, there's responsibility that's going to be on you, and you might be the only link 
ladies and gentlemen, between a person and heaven. I'm going to say that again. You might be the only link between a person and heaven. So uh, going to school, studying the Bible is a major responsibility. But Jesus gave us this responsibility when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When we look at these kings in uh, Chronicles, when we look at the 20 kings in the northern kingdom, every one of them was corrupt. There was not an incorrupt king in the northern kingdom of Israel. They all uh, uh, embarrassed God. They all shamed God. They all denied God. And we're going to start with the very first one who started this whole thing. Uh, we're going to start um, with, with one who actually started this, and the result was the split of the kingdom. The split of the kingdom. We see Rehoboam, who was in the south in Judah. He was not in the northern kingdom of Israel. He inherited Solomon's kingdom, chapter 10. Chapter 10. Rehoboam, when he became king after the death of his father Solomon, Rehoboam decided, I'm going to take my advice from the younger generation. The millennials are going to teach me. I'm not going to listen to the, these old guys. These old guys have messed up. You know how the young people think today. So Rehoboam decided, I'm not going to listen to the old people. I'm going to listen to the young people. And that got him in trouble. And before long, before long, ladies and gentlemen, he had, he had disconnected himself from the entire nation of Israel. That great kingdom that he... he um, inherited from his father Solomon, Rehoboam disconnected himself from the heart of the people because he rejected the older generation. He surrounded himself with young young men who didn't know diddly squat, uh, didn't know diddly, and, and as a result, Jeroboam rose up, and the people in the north, they enjoyed, they loved Jeroboam. Jer Jeroboam had leadership qualities. And Jeroboam had to flee from Israel and go to Egypt for a season uh, under the time during the time of Solomon. But when Jeroboam heard that Rehoboam was the king, I know it's confusing, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Well, Jeroboam uh, came back from Israel, came back from Egypt and challenged uh, Rehoboam and uh, went before Rehoboam with the older men, the older generation, and asked, what kind of kingdom is this going to be? What shall we do? What should we expect? And um, Rehoboam told Jeroboam, come back in three days. I'll tell you what you're to do. And when they came back in three days, Rehoboam humiliated Jeroboam and the older generation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, caused a civil war in Israel. A civil war broke out in Israel. And Israel was never the same again. Never the same again. That civil war that started at, upon the death of Solomon when his son Rehoboam became the king and Rehoboam grieved and angered the, the older generation. A civil war broke out. Brothers fought brothers, and, and the result was the kingdom was never, ever, ever the same. And for the rest of Chronicles, from chapter 10 until the rest of Chronicles, you see the phasing out, ladies and gentlemen, the phasing out, the, uh, the northern kingdom of Israel, those ten tribes of the north, they phased themselves out. And in the year 721 B.C., the northern kingdom called uh, Israel or called Samaria or called Ephraim was wiped out. No more were they in existence. The Assyrian army came and destroyed them and carried most of them away into uh, Assyria and never, never, never were they to return. Well, you'll say, where was Assyria? Assyria is the same place where God sent Jonah to preach. Now you know why Jonah hated the, the Assyrians. God sent Jonah to preach there. And, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, 
the capital of Assyria was Nineveh. And so what we have in Chronicles, starting with chapter 10, Rehoboam's harshness. We're going to look at chapter 11, the divided kingdom. Chapter 12, Rehoboam's death. Chapter 13, Abijah defeats Jeroboam. Well, you say, well, who was Abijah? Abijah was Rehoboam's son. Chapter 14, we see Asa becomes king. Asa was a good king. You can put a check near his name. Chapter 15, idols destroyed. When Asa became king, and, and from this point on, you're looking at mostly, you're looking at the, in Chronicles, you're looking at the kings of the southern nation of Judah, ladies and gentlemen. You don't get much from this point on about the northern kingdom, except when some, some of the kings would send out messengers to the north and say, come and worship at Jerusalem, come and let's gather together, because the northern kingdom was under the assault by the Assyrians, and the people in the north were being destroyed. And so uh, Second Chronicles focuses after chapter 10, Second Chronicles, the focus is mainly on the southern kingdom, and so you got a, low, a whole list of folks uh, who were Solomon's seed, who became kings, and whether they were good kings or whether they were bad kings, uh, your Bible will tell you if they were bad kings, they did evil in God's sight. Or if they were good kings, they did good in God's sight. So uh, it's, it's a very exciting and interesting. I'm a historian. I love history. I majored in history in college. But I love this history because history can teach us a lesson. When a person knows where he or she came from, they can help find their way of where they're going. But it's a sad nation who doesn't know its history. And it's a sad nation that rejects its history. And it's a sad nation that allows leaders to erase the history of the people or edit or redact the, nation, the nation's history. And so Asa becomes king, chapter 14. Chapter 15, Asa des destroys all the idols. Chapter 16, he enters into a league, uh, with an alliance with Syria, which was not a good thing. Chapter 17, we see Jehoshaphat's reign. Jehoshaphat was a good king. We see, chapter 18, Micaiah, the prophet, and uh, how important it was to have a prophet in those days. Chapter 18, when you get a chance to read that, uh, look at this prophet who stood up against all the other prophets who advised the king of the north. And this uh, prophet advised Jehoshaphat, no, don't enter into a league with this guy. Don't go into a battle with this guy. One prophet stood up for the Lord, and um, but the northern king uh, took the word of the majority of his prophets. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at America today, and a lot of these other nations, and there are some 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 even nation, some some folks from some of your nations, and especially Kenya and 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 and, and uh, Nigeria, uh, some of some of you guys got the nerve to come on my website and, and make remarks on this. But you know, I rebuke you when I when I find you. You know, I will rebuke you when I find you. Ask the brother from Tanzania. I will rebuke you. If you're not right, if you're, if you're deceiving God's people and you're trying to use Back to Basics ministry as a, as a, 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 a jump-off point, no, no, no. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, in fact, to show you, um, I, I, you know, we take a stand against ignorance. And there was a man, a, a brother, he, he graduated from our school in, in Kenya, one of our graduates. And he came on Facebook the other day, and he's reprimanding people for wearing masks and, and, and reprimanding preachers for, for not opening their churches on Sundays. Now, churches are closed in Kenya, too, but he's reprimanding them, saying, telling them to trust God and, 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 and this and that. And, but the thing he did, he denounced and he beat up on a lot of pastors who have 
trusting the Lord and are waiting a while until this coronavirus thing passes over. And I got on his case. I jumped on him, ladies and gentlemen, with four feet. Uh, not two feet, Gene Bratton, four feet. Okay? Um, so every now and then, every now and then, because you're in your word, ladies and gentlemen, and you know the word of God, you, it, it is impossible for you to stand and be quiet when there's Amen. injustice going on and when there's stuff going on. Just like this uh, brutal murder of, of this man in Minneapolis by this, by this policeman. Uh, the time is coming. The time is coming where this kind of thing is not going to be tolerated in this in this nation. And already there are people. I mean, they don't read the Bible. They don't know Jesus as I do. And a lot of these men and women are saying, "Hey, it ain't going to happen around here. We're not going to accept." You know, because this has been going on for centuries. You know, brutally, brutally beat, get beaten down, beating folks down, and 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 the law is on their side, and the, the law won't prosecute them, and even the president. Uh, well, put some dumb stuff as he tweeted uh, to support to support this policeman, ladies and gentlemen. The script is going to flip. The script is going to flip, and and we have to struggle. We have to work hard, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm being, being very honest with you. We have to work hard not to let these things get in our psyche and in our heart, because God said, "Lest there be found in any of us a root." of bitterness whereby many be defiled. We can't be bitter to us people because when the deal goes down and when the turmoil really, when the stuff really hits the fan in this nation and in your nation, uh, wherever you're from, somebody's got to stand for Jesus. Somebody's got to stand on the word of God. Now they call uh, uh, pastors like me uh, who who uh, you know, talk about righteousness and holiness and turn the other cheek. They call us wimps. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow Jesus. I'm gonna follow Jesus. But you know, wimpiness only goes so far. You, you, you okay? You put your foot on my neck, or you put your foot on Jackie Carter's neck. Uh, there might be some repercussions. There will be some repercussions. Uh, we're gonna turn the other cheek, but we will defend our household. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a time where uh, many people's love is being tested. Many people's Trust in the Lord is being tested, but uh, I, I will make a stand for Jesus. I want to be all that God wants me to be because when people, when the confusion hits this nation, and confusion is coming, when the war hits this nation, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, war is coming. Please take your head out of the sand. The war is coming. Uh, uh, Destruction, devastation is coming to this nation. Because when you look at what happened to Israel and how God let his own people be destroyed because of their sins, how in the world? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. You know, call, call up one of your favorite evangelicals, you know, uh, one of those guys who preaches preach that nice little flowery sermon, tickles your ears on Sunday, and, 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 and tells you what a good guy you are, and, and go on and keep on doing what you're doing. Call up your favorite evangelical and ask them, how in the world can judgment be prevented for this nation? How? in the world, by the way we're sinning against God. Ladies and gentlemen, it is inevitable that this nation go down. This nation has to go down unless we do what Second Chronicles 7.14 says. And you've been hearing me say, uh, preaching Second Chronicles 7.14 for quite some time, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I hear from heaven, I forgive their sin, I heal their land. You say, well, Pastor Carter, you're taking uh, the scripture and you're relating it to the present day. That's what we're supposed to do. It's, it's called a hermeneutical bridge. Uh, we're, we're supposed to cross that bridge from the scripture to our own situation so that people can know that this Bible is not talking about people way back then. God has a standard that he wants people to to abide by today. Cops can beat up on black folks and, and put their feet, their knees on their, their necks until they die, and, and the judge uh, will throw, out, throw the case out of the court, and, 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 and so most of these guys, are, most of these cops aren't even getting uh, to, 
to jail. They're not even being arrested. And the, fair, the truth of the matter is that they've got people who will send money to defend them in court because uh, 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 of their skin color. But ladies and gentlemen, the script is going to flip. And there are going to be a lot of people in hell, black and white, brown and yellow, who are going to wish they had heard the word of God. I, I'm saying it. There is no social distancing in hell. No social distancing in hell. Hell is going to be filled up to the gills of people who thought they could live any way they wanted to because of skin color or because of their uh, 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 bank account or because of their family name or because of where they live or because of their political uh, 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 success. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is going to be the equalizer and we're trying to prevent people from going to hell by teaching them the word of God. So y'all get in your word. I'm going to get my word so we can preach the word of God and share with them and, and, and persuade people. Persuade people. You can't beat them over the head with the Bible. You can't stuff this stuff down their throat. But we can persuade people uh, uh, to do what God says do. Because when we look at Chronicles, we see people who just threw it in God's face. They just stood in God's face and defied him. We don't care what your standards are, God. We're going to live any way we want to. And uh, even the priests, the priests were corrupt. The kings were corrupt. And they forgot about God. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's ever been a time that relates to the time of the Chronicles, it is right now, right now. Chapter 20, um, there's a plea for help. Jehoshaphat makes a plea for help. He knew where to go in time of trouble. And God heard his cry. And, and Jehoshaphat woke up one morning, and he was surrounded by the enemy. Jerusalem was surrounded by the enemy. And Jehoshaphat went to the temple. He put on sackcloth and ashes and called upon the name of the Lord. And then the Lord sent a prophet to Jehoshaphat and said, uh, uh, the battle's not yours. This battle is not yours. It's God's. And the next morning, God sent Jehoshaphat and the army of Israel out to face the enemy. But God said, you will not have to fight. You will not have to fight. Send the praise team. Send the singers. And they went with their instruments and they began singing songs of praise unto the Lord. And God confuse the enemy, and the enemy killed themselves. They killed one another. Ladies and gentlemen, God will fight for his people. God will fight for his people. You stand on the word of God and trust the Lord God, and don't t try to take justice in your own hands, and uh, 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 don't, try to, don't try to make things right yourself. Trust in the Lord. Then we see Jehoshaphat dying in chapter 21. Jehoram became the king. Chapter 22, Ahaziah became king. Chapter 23, Jehoiada became the king. You say, who are these people? <laughs> you all got to read about them. Chapter 24, Joash is anointed king. Joash, remember his name. Joash uh, made some good reforms. Joash was a reformer. But then after he repaired the temple, and now, and during this time of Joash, when he repairs the temple, this is the time of the minor prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. So that's how Haggai and Zechariah fit in to the uh, time of the Chronicles. Uh, there's a rebuilding of the temple, repairing the temple, and then Joash forsook the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this, this curve, this curve that... Uh, People sin, and then the curve starts to flatten out. They live in sin, and then uh, then starts going down. And then all of a sudden, God brings somebody who's going to bring the attention to the people. We need to turn to the Lord. And that is why it's so important for us to blow the trumpet in Zion. Zion, sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Chapter 25, we see Amaziah's army. Chapter 26, we see Uzziah's leprosy. King Uzziah. Now, King Uzziah is a contemporary of Isaiah. King Uzziah was Isaiah's cousin. 
King Uzziah or Azariah was King uh, was Isaiah the prophet's cousin, and so we see um, what happened to Uzziah. Uzziah disobeyed the Lord. Uh, Isaiah's cousin was corrupt. He was stricken with leprosy, and this king ruled Israel. Uh, apart from living in the palace. He was not allowed to live among the Israelis. He lived in his own house. He had leprosy. And, and, and he, was, uh, 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 dis- he, had a, he had to distance himself. He had to practice social distancing. And he ruled um, from a distance until he died. And then his son Jotham took over, chapter 27. Chapter 28, we see Oded. Oded is a prophet. He makes a prophecy, and um, King Ahaz angers the Lord. Chapter 29, we get to Hezekiah's reign. Hezekiah. Remember him. Hezekiah, who was also a contemporary of Isaiah, a contemporary of Hosea, a contemporary of Amos. They're all contemporaries and Hezekiah's reign begins chapter 29 Hezekiah came in ladies and gentlemen and he cleaned the temple he cleansed the temple uh, what a, a mighty job he did by calling the people back to righteousness we might look at this in, in a few minutes chapter 30 Hezekiah demanded that the people keep the Passover. There is joy in Jerusalem because the Passover was celebrated for the first time in a long time. The Jews had gotten to the point where they did not even remember to celebrate the Passover. And God had told them at the time of the Passover that they were to remember this event for, uh, for all time. Chapter 31, offerings to the Lord. Chapter 32, preparation for war. This time the Syrians, not the Assyrians, but the Syrians are coming to fight. Um, They they had a a king named Sennacherib. He made a big threat to God's people, and God had to put him down. Okay, we see the rest of Hezekiah's reign. And then chapter 33, uh, in Second Chronicles, we see Manasseh's evil acts. Manasseh was so evil, God even repented that he ever made him. I mean, can you imagine somebody being so corrupt that God repented that he even allowed, that he, he repented that he ever allowed that person to be born? So Manasseh's evil deeds in, in Israel. So what we see um, is a lot of corruption in Judah, a lot of corruption in Judah. By this time, Israel had been carried away captive. Chapter 34, Josiah becomes king. Uh, Remember that name. He was a good king, Josiah. He was a reformer. Revival came while Josiah was king. Josiah uh, led a revival. He led the people to repent and had the people to renew the, the covenant that God had made with Moses. So Josiah uh, led for a number of years a revival in, in Israel, in Judah. We could say Israel because Israel had been ca- carried away. So the nation of the Is- Israelites was called Judah. Chapter 35, the Passover observance. Josiah made a big mistake. He too went to war when the prophets told him, the prophet told him, no, God is saying don't go to war. But Josiah went and was killed in battle. Chapter 36, the last chapter of this um, book of Second Chronicles. And the last, actual, the last recorded chronicle, the re- last recorded uh, event in the history of the Jewish people in the Old Testament, we see Jehoiakim captured. Uh, his son Jehoiakim was uh, took over for a few months, and then uh, Zedekiah. Zedekiah is the king uh, when Israel, Jerusalem, is destroyed. At this time, from this time, uh, from chapter 36 of Second Chronicles. 
you can relate this to Jeremiah's life, or the events of Jeremiah, when Jeremiah had told the people, resist, uh, don't resist the king, yield to him. All of these things were happening as Nebuchadnezzar surrounded Jerusalem. Jeremiah is telling the people, and you see this in Jeremiah, don't resist this king. This is God's plan. Surrender to him and you'll live. And in Jeremiah chapter 38, uh, they threw Jeremiah into, in Jeremiah chapter 38, the princes, the leaders of Judah threw Jeremiah into a pit covered with a rock and tried to uh, suffocate him to death. And then it was the Ethiopian Ebed-Melech who took a, a handful of men and rescued Jeremiah from the pit so that Jeremiah could live. And God kept a prophet alive. This prophet, Jeremiah, witness. He was an eyewitness, ladies and gentlemen, of the destruction of the nation of Judah. He was an eyewitness. And, and we get his eyewitness account in Lamentations. Do you see how this whole Bible comes together? We, we finished the historical period. Now we can weave in portions based on the testimony of the prophets, based on other testimonies. We can weave in certain of the Psalms. We can weave in certain of the writings of the old, uh, uh, the minor prophets and, and the major prophets so we can put them in their place in history. But history actually ends with the last verse of the 32nd chapter, I'm sorry, of the 36th chapter of Second Chronicles. Okay? And everything else, you have to back it up, walk it back, and put it in to its place. Let's look at chapter 36. Well, I've covered a whole lot. Um, that we'll come back to chapter 36. I just want to go back to chapter, a few chapters and just show you a few things. Are there any questions, anyone, any, anybody right now? Any questions? Anyone have any questions at this point? I have one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did um, Micaiah, is that correct, correct, in chapter 18? Chapter 18? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. When... Um, when the other priests told him to agree with what they had already told the king, they had to agree that he could go into battle, and he said he could not agree. He could only tell the truth and speak what the Lord said. But then okay. when he got there, he agrees. Um, but then at the same time, he foretells Ahab's death. So why does he agree with them and say what they wanted to hear, but then at the same token, he foretold Ahab's death if he does go into war? Okay, Jackie Carter, great question. That, you got about five or six questions in that one, but it's good. Okay, let's take a look at that. Chapter 18. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Now we're looking at two different kingdoms. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, the southern kingdom. Ahab was the king of the northern kingdom. Okay, Jackie? Okay. And after a cert certain years, he went down to Ahab, to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance, etc. And Ahab, verse 3, king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now this is the king of Israel, Ahab, wicked Ahab, Jezebel's husband, said unto Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered, I am as thou art. In other words, he said, I'm a Jew like you are. And my people as thy people, and we, be, we will be with you, with thee in the war. So Jehoshaphat wanted, I mean Ahab wanted to go up against the Syrians. And he asked, he's trying to get uh, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, to go with him. 
and these two mighty armies could defeat the enemy. So, and um, Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So Jehoshaphat says, Before I make a decision, let's seek the Lord on this. Very important right there, Jackie, okay? And, and my friends. Jehoshaphat said, Let's seek the Lord on this. Now, Je Je Jehoshaphat, look, he's got f uh, hundreds of, uh, uh, I mean, Ahab, he's got at least 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of, 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 of Jezebel's prophets, and all the, these are paid prophets, Jackie. These are like a lot of folks in, in, in pulpits in America today. They're paid. They're, they're paid to, to uh, uh, do whatever a certain leader tells them to do. They're paid. No matter what's happening, they're going to do what they're paid to do. And so uh, Jehoshaphat finds himself in this situation that this king wants him to join his kingdom and go into battle with him. And so Jehoshaphat said, no, let's seek the Lord. And verse 5, Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? And shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For God will deliver it unto the king's hand. Hey, look, these prophets are going to say anything the king said. It's no different from what we're experiencing today. These prophets are going to do everything this leader tells them to do. But Jehoshaphat said, verse 6, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Uh-oh. He's a troublemaker, isn't he, Jackie? I mean, he's going against the grain. Everybody's doing Jehoshaphat's, I mean, Ahab's bidding. Everybody. And, 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 and uh, Ahab, Ahab didn't have time to fire this guy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He didn't have time to fire this guy. So this guy's making waves. Hey, let's seek the Lord. Now, I heard of your 450 prophets. Yeah, they're saying, yeah, go up and, and fight at Ramos Gilead. But is there a prophet of the Lord? Is there anybody who has heard from the Lord? And see, Ahab's prophets worship Baal. We, and, and you've got to bring, you bring in that whole story of Elijah in there, Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah went up against 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Jezebel, and these were corrupt. Uh, 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 demon worshiping prophets and so Micaiah Micaiah is God's man Jackie to stand against Ahab and to seek out and, 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 and to give the people what God says in his word and so to make a long story short Micaiah tells him no uh, and, and, but, but look at verse 14, and when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be, deli be delivered into your hand. Because, because Micaiah knew, Jackie, that um, King Jehoshaphat had already listened to Ahab and his prophets up north. And had his mind made up, but but he had enough sense to ask, should we inquire, is there a prophet of the Lord who can give us God's opinion? And, and that's so important, and it's so important to us, ladies and gentlemen, the, the whole world. Uh, the bishop may say, yeah, I want all of my churches to do this. And, and the pastor may say, I want all the members to meet here. Or, 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 or the president may say, no, you can take off your mask. Go on, go back to churches. But is there anyone who's heard the Lord in this matter? That's where Micaiah stood up. And then Micaiah agrees with what everybody was saying, but he was jesting, Jackie. He was not... He was not uh, he, he, he was jesting because he knew that the public opinion was to say, yes, let's go up. And so let me read that 14th, 14th verse again. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. But look at verse 15. And the king said to him, how many times 
shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? You got that, Jackie? Uh-huh. How many yeah. times do I, do I have to tell you, don't play with me. Don't, 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 don't play with my emotions. Don't get religious on me. How many times did I tell you not, not, to, not, to, not to do that? <laughs> then he said, then, then, Micaiah, then Jehoshaphat, I mean, yes, Jehoshaphat was at a position to listen to what Micaiah had heard from the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so important that we know what God's will is, what God's plan is. That is why we need to spend time in the Word, time in prayer, and, and not take everybody's opinion. The majority ain't always right. Look at verse 16. Then he said, after the king realized that he was lying to him, and he said, look, here, how many times did I tell you, don't, don't mess with me, don't play with me. Come on, tell me the truth. What did God say? Verse 16, then he said, I did see all of Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord wow. said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? So he prophesied that to Ahab and to Jehoshaphat. I told you he wouldn't tell me anything good. Okay, because, because he was not one of those people in Ahab's pocket on his payroll. You know, you, 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 can, you can buy your preacher a dime a dozen, put a little money in some of these, these knuckleheads' hands, and they'll say anything you want them to say. We're living Amen. that kind of age today. Amen. Okay. But, then, but there was a guy who stood up for Jesus, I mean, stood up for God, and, and, and said, uh, uh, no, this is what God is saying. You're going to be scattered on the mountains. Verse 19, let's go down there. And the Lord said... Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Okay? Who? Uh, Micaiah told him the truth. Ahab didn't have to go to Ramoth Gilead. He didn't have to go there. He did not have to go there. But then, look at this. This is a, a strange verse. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that we may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit. Listen to this, verse 20. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth wow. of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Ladies and gentlemen, there are lying spirits. There are lying spirits. And God allows them to exist. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, a, this is revelation knowledge. There are lying spirits who, who uh, will go out and entice God's people and entice the enemy. Remember that prophet, that old prophet, uh, who, who went to the man of God and, and the man of God was preaching and, and God told the, the man of God, when you finish, don't stop in anybody's house. You come straight home. Yeah. Don't stop. And this old prophet went and met that young prophet and said, I'm a prophet just like you. And, and the angel of the Lord appeared to me and said, go and find you and to bring you to my house for you spend the night with me, have a meal. Ladies and gentlemen, there are enticing spirits. That is why we have got to test the Spirit by the Spirit. That is why we need to stay alert. We need to stay awoke. And God will even permit, we get this from this scripture, God will permit an enticing spirit to come and entice you. Look at uh, 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 the, the prophet who uh, was told, don't go and prophesy outside against Israel. Don't prophesy against Israel. But he wanted to go because he wanted to get that money. You know, a yeah. whole lot of folks going out there prophesying and try to get that money. And and, 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 and Lord is, is allowing enticing spirits to entice them. God is looking for someone who will worship him in spirit 
and in truth. And so we've got to be alert. We have got to be alert. Even us prophets and preachers and teachers, we have got to be alert that we do not entertain uh, demonic spirits, that we do not allow any corrupt communication to come out of our mouths. Which takes me back to those old days before, before I met you, Jackie Carter, before I met all of y'all. I mean, when I was back there jitterbugging, you know, back in the day, you know. And, 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 and the guys are trying to hit on the gals, and, and we, we, shoot, we tell them anything, anything that we think they wanted to. Dr. Jean Bat Bretton, isn't, isn't that a Philly thing? Yeah. <laughs> yep. We tell them anything. Oh, your hair is so long and so silky and so smooth. And, and the chick had nappy hair, you know what I mean? Or, 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 or your skin is so smooth and she had bumps all over her face and everything. I mean, we would tell them anything to get over. And those were lying spirits. Those were lying enticing spirits. Come on, somebody talk to me. Amen. I just, amen. I just wrote a little post that it reads this. Strangely, strangely enough, when one is corrupt, the door is open for other demonic spirits. Yes, 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 yes. That is why we have to be so on guard, ladies and gentlemen, even today. Let's relate this to today. Everything you hear on CNN is not real news. Amen. And everything right. you hear on ABC, CBS, is not real news. Everything you see on Facebook is not real news. Everything you see on YouTube is not real news. Everything you hear from the president's press secretary is not real news. Ladies and gentlemen, politicians have their talking points. And, and, and everything coming out of a leader's mouth is not real news. It, a lot of it is fake news. A lot of it's fake news. Now, now we got a big issue between President and his favorite uh, 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 social media agency, Twitter. That they're they're <laughs> feuding, and, and and you know, President owns part of Twitter, but they're having a feud now because Twitter has been doing some fact checking, and 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 and, and they're fact checking the President. You know, everything, and they were saying everything you've been saying, Mr. President, ain't a fact. So everything you hear is not real news. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have to be sure. And, and remember in the old days, uh, like my father, we'd be sitting on the porch and uh, uh, Joe Smith would be coming up the street. And my, I'd hear my father say, uh-oh, here comes that lying Joe Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. Back in those days, we knew who the liars were. You know, you knew, you knew. Or, or we had a guy named Wendy Williams. Uh, Wendy, his name was Wendy. Oh, here comes that lying Wendy Williams. Hey, Mr. Carter. Oh, here comes an hour of lies. And and, and and my dad would just chuckle because he knew everything he's going to hear is a lie. Now my dad could tell some tall ones too. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be on the porch listening to folks, you know, trying to outlive one another. Well, ladies and gentlemen, things have not changed. <laughs> Even in the church, you got lying spirits, enticing spirits, trying to entice people. The Lord said, and and then they get the point where Karen, they get in the point you're in the service, and 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 where you know you you have a prophet in the church, and the prophet will say up and and and, flat, and make this stuff, and Justina, they make it sound so flowery. Thus saith the Lord, I see. Uh, and, and, you know, they make it sound so flowery, mm -hmm. and then everybody in the congregation says, hush. Oh, they're so spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. I, remember, I remember when uh, we first got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord had me teach the church about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and some of the sessions where we were, we were uh uh, demonstrating speaking in tongues and interpretation. I remember every time someone, if someone would start off in tongues, there was a certain lady, once she, once she heard someone in tongues, she said, ha, 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 Once she would hear any, anybody, and once she heard somebody speaking, she would ha, 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 like she was getting a quick and, ha, 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 it was all oh, about, shut up, shut it down. <laughs> And I'd have to, as a pastor, I have to shut them all down. Shut up. Nobody speaks but in English. Okay, you're out of order. 
<laughs> yes, you were and, like that. Lord Jesus, we've come a long way, but yet we haven't really come a long way. But you've got to watch out, ladies and gentlemen, for those lying spirits, those enticing spirits. And, and we have responsibility. Now, I talk a whole lot. Y'all don't know me, but I talk a whole lot of jive to Jackie. You know, I talk a lot of jive. Don't I, Jackie? Oh, no. <laughs> you know what, Dustina? Dustina, she loves it. Dustina, 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 this girl loves it. D- Dustina, you need to t- call Jack and have a talk with her because yeah. she loves it. Okay. <laughs> Lucia Williams, I know. Uh, Lucia Williams, you know, you you, you, you married a jive talker, Cliff Williams, my main man, Cliff. Cause we we specialize in talking jive when we were coming up. Okay. Yeah, uh, he, now. he specializes. <laughs> Cliff, Cliff, he, yeah, he, oh, Cliff Williams he, specializes. Yes, he does. He came, he came to the same dive <laughs> talk school. We were trained by some of the best, you know. We were trained by the, the best dive talkers there were. So, but now I, I, that I we're told, saved. I told Pastor Steve Harvey might not be on the air, but he doesn't have to worry. <laughs> Steve Harvey making money on, on, on stuff that I used to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> but 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 now but now my friends, we've got to tell the truth. Even when you're tempted to twist it mm-hmm. a little bit. Even, Shame even I, I wrote a book called My Dad the Artist and in that book well my dad played major league uh baseball back in the old days, 1940s, in the old Negro League, which was a Negro professional league, he played against Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson and those guys. And, and, and I wrote a story about him in my book, My Dad the Artist, and I talked to him. And, every time, and I mentioned every time my dad tells the story, the ball that he hit against Satchel Paige for a triple, that ball go, goes farther and farther out into right field, and 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 if you listen to my dad, I'll tell the story. The story happened in 1940. But if my dad were alive today, he would have you believing that that right fielder is still chasing that ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gene Bratton, your father and my father both played professional baseball on the same team. So I know they yes, have some they stories did. to tell. <laughs> my dad did, too. My dad did <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But let's get back to when you read Chronicles, you're reading about kings who uh, most of them were corrupt. But then you had good kings that come along. Asa, uh, Jehoshaphat, Josiah. Josiah was such a good king that uh, he called Israel to reform. And the first thing he did, let's tear down the groves, tear down those idols, those places, of, those altars of worship, and let's get rid of those uh, prostitutes hanging around the temple, and, and let's clean house. And Josiah even demoted his mother. Josiah's mother was called the queen mother of Israel. She had a position. I mean, she, she, she practically ruled all the women in Israel. But Josiah set her down and demoted her. You are no longer queen mother because you've been worshiping Baal. I mean, he set his mama down. You know, that's a, that's a great man of God going to set his mama down because nobody sets his mm-hmm. mama down. Okay, but jo- Josiah uh, put God first. And so, and then you see Hezekiah. Starting in chapter 29, Hezekiah, what a mighty man of God. Hezekiah. Um, when he became became king, and relate Hezekiah to Isaiah. This man was so much into the Lord and obeying the Lord. He made some mistakes, but God blessed him. God prospered him because from the day he became king, he began cleaning house, bringing Israel back to where Israel ought to be, and renewing the covenant that Israel made. Uh, with God under Moses. And so God prospered Hezekiah, and God prospered the nation. When a a leader turns his heart to God and worships God, I'm not talking about this uh, religious stuff we hear 
or or uh, out of Washington D.C. Everybody knows how to talk about God when they need some votes. But I'm talking about living daily and and letting some fruits come out of your life and treating people with dignity and with respect and 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 uh, letting the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart being acceptable unto God. God honors that sort of thing. God honors a man or a woman of integrity who whom God has allowed to be in the office. Okay, and Hezekiah was such a person. And and then at a certain point, Hezekiah received a visit from Isaiah. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah and Isaiah writes about this in, in his book, and it's in Second Kings. And Isaiah visits with Hezekiah and tells him, Thus saith the Lord, get your house in order. You're going to die. I mean, this king was prospering and doing well and leading the nation back to God. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, God sends him uh, Isaiah, and I says, get your, Isaiah says, get your house in order. You're going to die. And we see, and I preached this on Sunday. My message on the online church was, um, seek my face. Seek my face. And I use Hezekiah as an example. When Isaiah told Hezekiah what the Lord had said, Hezekiah did not call a press conference. He did not call a meeting of his political party. He did not call his investors and his economic advisors. Uh, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says he turned his face to the wall. And he cried out unto the Lord. He sought the face of God. And that just lets me know that no matter what the situation is, when we turn our face to the wall and call upon the Lord God, eliminate yes. everybody else. Ele yes. Mama can't help me. Daddy can't help me. Uncle Willie can't help me. Okay. Uh, uh, Wendy Williams can't help me. Lion Joe Smith can't help me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 the prophets of Ahab can't help me. Lord, what shall I do? Lord, forgive me. Lord, and, and Hezekiah repented and called on the Lord. And even before the prophet Isaiah left the premises of the king's palace, the Lord spoke to Isaiah and said, turn back. Woo! Turn back. Go on back. Tell Isaiah. Tell, I mean, Tell Hezekiah, I have heard his prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, God is an awesome God. He's yes. an awesome God. What if our leaders, our local officials, state officials, national officials, what if many of our pastors would just stop and say, Oh, God, I turn my face to you. I seek you with all my heart. God, forgive me. I've sinned against you. If, if husbands would say that, wives would say that, children would say that, and, 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 and not try to cover something over, gloss it over, just come clean before God. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of man, woman, God is looking for. God wants yeah. to bless. And God told Isaiah, go back to it. Turn back. Go on back in the palace. Tell Hezekiah, I've heard his prayer. Tell him. He's got 15 more years to live. I'm giving him 15 more years. And then Isaiah went and took a lump of figs and put that lump of figs on that cancer that was on Hezekiah's body, and God removed that cancer. He yes. gave Amen. Hezekiah 15 more years, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Mm -hmm. 15 more years to lead the nation into righteousness and holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Yes. If we just trust in the Lord. No matter, hey, Lucille, no matter what the situation is, I'm glad you're back in school. I'm glad God's healed your eyes, you're back in school. But there is no situation that God cannot handle. There, uh, Dustina, there's no situation God can't yeah. handle. Trust in the Lord. I, I don't trust the opinions of people. Now I'm 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 wearing a mask when I go outside, mm -hmm. and uh, 
I'm, I'm uh, social distancing because I believe uh, these scientists know what they're talking about, okay? And I'm not going to tempt God like I see some people on on television mm-hmm. uh, interviews. Mm-hmm. They're at the beach and, and they're 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 uh, uh, so close on the beach and all this, and and they put a mic in one person's hand, and she said, "Well, I, you got to go sometime, and everybody got to go sometime." Now, see, that's stupid. That's that is stupid. stupid. Then I hear mm-hmm. another, you know, well, well, I don't need to wear a mask because Jesus got me. He's got me covered. Well, Jesus didn't okay. call you to be stupid. Jesus called you That's to be right. in the know. Jesus called you to know. And he's got certain people who know more about this thing than you do. And so don't tempt Amen. God and, 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 and just let's just trust the Lord. But I love Hezekiah. I think Hezekiah is one of the most underrated people in Scripture. Uh, he turned his face to the wall and he cried unto the Lord and he was not ashamed to cry out unto the Lord just like David when David uh, it was revealed uh, his sin was revealed with Bathsheba David mm-hmm. was not ashamed he put on sackcloth and ashes and he laid on his face and cried unto the Lord and he repented and I want to make make something personal well, make something personal I just want to share my father died nine years ago, just before Jackie and I got married. Um, my father uh, died. And before, uh, my mother did not want to put him in a nursing home, but he, was, he just became uncontrollable. She said he'd get up at night and try to unlock the door and go outside and this. And so she had no other choice but to put him in a nursing home. And so I went to visit him when he was in the hospital the night before they sent him to the nursing home, and the Lord sent me. It's a hard thing when you've got to tell your father what thus saith the Lord. It ain't easy, Dr. Gene Bratton. Sure. It ain't yeah. easy, Karen. Roger Pond, it's not easy. Uh, uh, when you got a word for your father, and when you know your father's a proud, stubborn man, and uh, yeah. and, and, and you don't want to, you know... Uh, so God gave me a word. God said, now your father is going to go to a nursing home. And he said, now I want you to go to the hospital and visit with him before they take him to the nursing home. And I want you to tell him, Dad, you need to repent of your sins. Call on the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Repent of your sins. You've been rebelling against God for a long time. Repent of your sins and call on the name of Jesus. And 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 my dad looked at me and said, "Okay, baby." He called he called everybody baby. He called Joe Louis baby. He called Mike Tyson baby. Okay, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I said, Dad. I was like I was like. The king said to Micaiah, and I look at Dad, don't play with me now. This is serious. Okay, okay, baby, I'm, I'm going to do this. I said, Dad, after I leave, I want you praying. I want you to confess your sins. I want you to call on the name of the Lord, ask him to forgive you, ask him to save you. I went back to that hospital. The Lord sent me back. Go back to the hospital. See if he's left. The next day, they go back to the hospital. See if he's if they've taken him to the nursing home. I went back there and they had taken him to the nursing home, but one of the orderlies said, "Come here, Pastor Carter, come here." He said, "Your father called on the name of Jesus all night long. He was praying out loud, asking God to forgive him. I repent of my sins, and and." calling on the name. He said, all night long he called on the name of the Lord. You know, Dr. Gene Bratton, that blessed my heart. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Not only did it bless my heart, but it took a heavy load yeah. off my heart. Mm-hmm. Because when you spend a lot of time, and every one of you have been through this, you've you got loved ones, they're hard-hearted. we got some hard-hearted folks in our families. And many of them won't bend. But when I heard that my father bent, 
you know, that takes a load, a big weight off. Yes. And when the Lord, when the Lord told me that he had received Jesus, as God spoke to me. He's saved. He, he belongs to me now. You know that takes, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, does. years of 30, I'm talking about 30, 40 years of being intimidated because I'm a Christian and, and, and I did not become uh, a professional athlete, but I, I chose to follow Jesus and, and, and preach God, preach Jesus. And, and all the times in, in our household, they beat up the preacher, bash the preacher, put the preacher down. And, and then um, to, to have him, even before he passed away, to call me and ask me to talk to him, pray for him, and then to hear that he had called on the name of the Lord, mm. that took a heavy weight off. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, don't, I didn't intend to get way out there and get it personal, but each of you is it's wrestling okay. with somebody okay. in your household or your family. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. And don't give up on our Lord. You see, when Hezekiah turned his face to the Lord, God gave him favor. And then one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and, and please read this when you get a chance, Second Chronicles 16.9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Visualize this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward him. That means that you don't have to be a perfect person, but when you call on the Lord with a pure heart, when you call upon him sincerely, no matter what the situation is, God will hear your prayer. Pastor Lucille Williams, Elder Lucille, come on and comment on that, will you please? Look, I'm about to have a, a, a big cry, baby cry over <laughs> here. I, gotta move my I, I, I am because I can relate. Um, I grew up in a home where, you know, we were practically born and raised on the church pew. And so was my father. But when he became an adult, he strayed so far from the church, I think he forgot the address. <laughs> and he did everything that he thought he was big and bad enough to do. And somewhere along the line, I, I ended up, you know, acting like my father. But I remember when I, I said, I always call it, um, resume my relationship for real with the Lord. And the one thing I cried out to God about was, I'm going to stop trying to make my daddy. Because, like I said, when you love your, when you love love somebody so much, and you know what direction they're headed in, yes. you don't want to see them go that way. That's and true. I remember crying out, and I cried out and stood in the gap for my father, and I told God, I will take my hand off of it. Because there's nothing, we have to realize, there's nothing that we can do yes. except trust God. And lo and behold, I got a phone call two weeks later saying my father had cancer. Uh -huh. Right away, I started to jump into Lucille mode, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You cried out, and you said so I let I, whatever it is that you're trying to do, God, you do it. That cancer made him think. He didn't turn right away, but it made him think, and you could see there was a change. And then I went to South Carolina to visit, went to church with my stepmother, and when we came back from church, God is so awesome. You could see the glow even in the physical before we even got in the house. We could see the shine from heaven on my father's house. Praise God. Went inside. Not only had he repented of his sins, this man must have called 100 people before we left, before we got home. Uh -huh. He must have preached 10 sermons. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. In that short span of time, eventually, I mean, he did pass away. But for the number of people whose lives were touched and Hallelujah. changed, Hallelujah. Just yes. because. So like I said, the one I'm listening to you talking to talk about your father, but it also reminded me because, you know, I always tell people like I told you the last time. 
I had that, that, you know, that Jonah spirit. I got mine. You get yours. Do what you want to do because I'm not going through all of this. But God is awesome. He is such an awesome God, and he will do anything but fail us, and we just have to know when to do what to do and when to leave it alone. Praise Take God. the dust off our feet and let it go. Praise God. Praise God. What a mighty testament is Elder Lucia Williams, ladies and gentlemen, one of our students from Birdsboro, Pennsylvania. Okay, one of those little towns uh, north of Philly, northwest of Philly, and powerful, powerful, and praise God. Thank God for you, Lucille, and uh, my, my classmate, your husband, Cliff. Praise God. When we take our hands off it, and, and, yes, and a lot Lord. of times we don't know when to take our hands off it, sometimes we just, and God might say, just release him, release her, let him go. And uh, that takes us back to Second Chronicles 20:15. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this mm. great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but mm. God's. That's what, yes. God, told, that's what God told yes. Jehoshaphat. Uh, don't be afraid of this multitude. Uh, 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 the battle is not yours. It is mine, saith the Lord, the battle mm. of God. And let God fight okay. the battle, no matter what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what it looks like, you Amen. give it to God. Praise God. Well, praise God. We're going to turn uh, the lesson back over to Jackie Carter, and she's going to give us uh, closing comments, entertain any questions, and then uh, close us out with prayer. And I'm going to blow my nose. Excuse me. Um, are there any questions? Questions of Pastor Carter. I I really wish that we could um could have just delved into a, a, a few of the other things because I I noticed that um, well one of the things or a couple of the things that I uh, made note of were, were the illnesses with which God allowed to come upon uh, not only um, Hezekiah but Asa had a God allowed a foot disease yes. to come upon yes. him. Yes, yes. And yes. then Jehoram had a bowel disease to the point that he lost his bowels. And then King Uzziah had leprosy. So it just reminded me that um, that that disease is present. That we're going to suffer with some things. But I thought that it was, um, like past, I thought it was awesome that the others died from their disease. But uh, because um, Hezekiah humbled himself, then his life was extended. So those are just a couple of the things that, that I noticed in terms of the diseases that God allowed um, those three kings to, to suffer from. And so we will, we we may go through this life without having to experience that personally, but then there are people we know who do. So it just kind of reminds us what we have to do and the kind of people that we have to be, even when we're going through these kinds of um, of illnesses. Amen. Any Amen. questions? Amen. You want to continue and close us out? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the rain. We thank you for the sun. We thank you, Father, that you love us enough that you allow us to receive your blessings, but also to be chastised when we wander away. We thank you that we can always come home, that you always open your arms to us and welcome us in. May we learn from the kings and the lessons that we have read about and studied tonight. And even though some started out following in the, the, the steps of David, somehow along the way they lost their way. And Father, that just teaches us that we can start out with good intentions, but somehow we can be persuaded and we can be misled. But help us when that happens, Father God to return, to repent, to cry out to you earnestly because that's what it means to repent, not just change your behavior, but to change your heart. 
And we pray, Father God, that you will use us, use us to reach someone else. Even as we are being sheltered in, we can still reach out to others with a word from you. So we ask that you bless each one who has joined us tonight individually, bless their households, provide for their every need, and for those who will view and listen to the lesson at a later time, we ask blessings upon them as well. May your word go forth, Lord, not for the education of man, but that our hearts might be changed, that we will, we will stand up against injustice and those who oppress the already oppressed. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. We love you. We love you. This message is going to be sent out tomorrow. God okay. bless you all. Thank you. God bless. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining.